Yeah, but I'm not too good on the phone. Right, you said you like to look people in the eye when you talk to them. Yeah. yeah. You don't remember saying that. Well, that's the thing. I have this condition. It's gonna be all right, Luz. Don't call me Luz. I barely know you. Sweetie, you're sort of dating him. But... Sorry, I'm not better looking. By the time you wake up in the morning, all the memories we targeted with have withered and disappeared. As in a dream upon waking. Is there any risk of brain damage? Well, uh, technically speaking, the procedure is brain damage. Hollywood is fascinated by memory loss. Movies like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, Memento, and Fifty First Dates probably reflect our fears. Four and a half million Americans have Alzheimer's. And the Alzheimer's Association says unless we can find more effective drugs, that number will triple by the middle of the century. But there is hope on the horizon. Here in MIT's humanoid robotics lab, researchers create robots designed to move and respond like humans. Hello. Hello. Good robot. Enter Charlie Kemp. Kemp has built a wearable computer he calls Duo, equipped with a backpack hard drive, head-mounted camera, and position sensors on his arm. Kemp is trying to program Duo to remember the way we do, to filter out the ordinary and file away what is new or different. There's all this stuff that humans take for granted. You know, it's the, the common sense, our everyday activities, our mundane existence is what machines have an incredibly difficult time with. Someday, Kemp says a wearable computer might enhance your memory. For example, recognizing people you encounter and reminding you when you saw them last. Nearby at MIT's Media Lab, Sunil Vemuri has designed a memory prosthesis. The wireless device attaches to his belt it records all of his conversations, sends them to a computer, and converts the recordings to text files. He can then search by keywords and date. The eventual goal of all of this is to help people with everyday memory problems. Vemuri's memory prosthesis isn't something you can buy. It's only a prototype. So if machines aren't ready to save us from memory problems, how about medicine? For people with Alzheimer's, the FDA has already approved a handful of drugs. These medications offer a mild but temporary improvement in memory. They are not able to stop the buildup of plaques and tangles in the brain that result in progressively more profound memory loss. A new generation of drugs is on the way for Alzheimer's and other serious problems with memory, based on a better understanding of how memory works at a molecular level. This is a giant marine snail. Much of that understanding can be traced back to this humble creature and the work of Dr. Eric Kandel. I realized to really understand learning and memory, one has to go to the simplest example and to begin with that and try to understand it. Kandel won the Nobel Prize for deciphering the chemical changes in the marine snail's brain when memories are made. Kandel co-founded Memory Pharmaceuticals in 1998, and the company now has two drugs in clinical trials for Alzheimer's and mild cognitive impairment. Helicon Therapeutics, Cortex Pharmaceuticals, and Sention Pharmaceuticals also have memory drugs in clinical trials. Even with the great advances in understanding and all the research, an FDA-approved memory drug is years away. There's no miracle pill yet, but as we've seen, you can take basic steps to preserve, even improve your memory. I hope it's been a memorable hour. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Thanks for watching. You can learn more about memory at CNN.com. And don't forget to tune in for my next primetime special. It's on medical science that solves crimes. That's in May.